Now that we have Vivado and Vitus installed, let's create the FPGA bitstream for the PL. We can do this by opening up the Vivado tool and creating a Vivado project. Click Next, then enter in your Vivado project name. I'm naming this LED switch test because I'll only be creating some digital logic in the PL that connects some switches to lights or LEDs that are on the board. This is so that you can get a little more familiar with how development works in the PL. I'll be developing more advanced digital logic for the PL in later videos for the Robodog. Then enter a project location. I'll be saving this under my Robodog directory. This is also my Git repo that's linked to my GitHub, so everything I'll be doing here can be found and downloaded there. I'll put a link in the description. After entering your project name and location, press Next, and then accept the defaults here by pressing Next again. Here we are presented with different Xilinx chips that you can build your bitstreams for. However, it's better to select your particular board if you can, since Vivado will pre-configure a lot of settings that will be helpful for you when creating your Vivado project. I'm using the Zybo Z7-20, so we'll choose this option. If you don't see your board listed here, you can try clicking the Install Update Boards button to see if Xilinx Hub has the board you need. Different boards could be from Xilinx themselves or third-party vendors like Digilent or Avnet. Here are a couple boards as an example. If you still don't see your board here, don't worry. You can still manually place the required board files in your Vivado install directory, which will be under Tools, Xilinx, Data, Boards, Board Files, if you haven't changed the default directory during installation. You can usually get the board files from the same vendor that's providing your board. Once you've selected the board, select Next, and then Finish. Now that the project is initialized, let's load in the constraints file. The constraints file can be found on Digilent's GitHub. I'm going to save this file to the same directory as the project. Then I can add it to the project by right-clicking on constraints, clicking Add Sources, clicking Next, clicking the plus sign, and selecting Add Files, then clicking on the constraints file that you just loaded, and pressing OK then finish. The constraints file tells Vivado which pins should be connected to which highest level ports in the design, as well as other general information about the ports or specifics about timing in the design. If you don't know what any of that means, I'll be getting back to some of this in a second, but first let's uncomment some of the ports that we'll be using. We'll be uncommenting the pins dedicated for the switches on the board, as well as the pins for the LEDs. Then make sure to save the file by pushing Ctrl S or the save to disk icon. Now let's jump into making the block diagram by pressing Create Block Design in the Flow Navigator area. I'll keep the default name for the block design and press OK. After pressing OK, you'll be presented with your work area for creating your block design. I'll double click the diagram tab to enlarge the area. You can either hold down Control, then press I, or press the little plus icon in the center of the diagram to bring up the search tab for the pre-created digital logic blocks known as IP cores. IP standing for intellectual property. So let's add in the Zinc Processing System IP core. This is actually a pretty unique IP core since most cores are instantiating that particular digital logic in the PL. However, this IP core is more of a configuration block for you to configure how the hardcore processor in the PS region will be configured. Most beginners will actually confuse this for creating some sort of soft core processor in the PL. And that's just not the case here. You can run the block automation tool and it will automatically make certain connections for you that it assumes you want, like connecting the processor to the DDR and to various fixed IOs. For establishing a communication path between the PS and your digital logic in the PL, we would normally use something called an AXI bus, abbreviated AXI. Since we're just connecting some LEDs to some switches, we don't need to make an AXI bus for this project, so we can remove these references to AXI located at these ports. We can remove it by double-clicking the IP core. This brings up the configuration panel for the system, which should look familiar to you. This is where you can configure various settings in your PS region. What we want to change is located in the PSPL configuration tab. Expand the AXI non-secure enablement, GP master AXI interface, and uncheck MAXI GP0 interface. Press OK. You'll see a few warnings pop up. It's okay to ignore them. Even Digilent has acknowledged these warnings and has provided documentation on why these warnings pop up on their website. I'll put a link in the description if you're curious. After pushing OK, you'll see that the IP core removed the AXI interface from the diagram. 
The next step is to add the logic for having the switches control the LEDs. Start by right-clicking the canvas, then select Create Port. The name of this port should be SW for switch, and it should be an input. Vectors are 3 to 0 because there are a total of 4 switches on the board. Then press OK. The reason why we would want to name the port SW was because that's what the name was in the constraints file. If we named them anything differently, Vivado wouldn't know what pin that port would be tied to, unless we updated the constraints file. Similar to the switches, we need to use the same name as the LEDs when we create the four LED ports. I'll do the same as before, but this time I'll name the port LED, make it an output, and have the vector of the signal be from 3 down to 0 since there are four LEDs that we specified in the constraints file. So now all we need to do is hover over the port until you see the pencil icon, then click and drag to the other port. And that's all there is to it. To make this diagram look a little nicer here, I'm just going to click the Regenerate Layout button. And then I'm going to click the Validate Design button to make sure there isn't anything wrong with the design I just created. Now that it says there are no errors, I'm going to save this project and generate the VHDL based on this block diagram. You can do this by going to the Sources tab, expanding Design Sources, then right-clicking the Design 1 block diagram file, and selecting the HDL wrapper. Press OK. After a few seconds, the VHDL will be created. You can see that the top file is now blue representing HDL source code. If you click it, you'll see what the top level VHDL file looks like. For those that don't know, VHDL is a programming language that's used for describing hardware. So what we're doing here is generating the software based on our diagram that describes the hardware that we want to create. You can of course write VHDL yourself instead of using the block diagram if you want to have more control over the hardware you create. Now that the VHDL is created, you can click on Generate Bitstream in the Flow Navigator on the left-hand side, located here. Vivado just says that this is the first time the Bitstream is being generated for the project, and it needs to run through a couple of different steps before it can make the Bitstream. After you click Yes, Vivado will start building the Bitstream. Vivado can take anywhere from a few minutes to several hours to build the bitstream depending on how complicated your digital logic is. You can see what step Vivado is on if you look at the top right corner. When it's finished, you'll get a pop-up saying that the bitstream generation has completed. You can hit cancel. The next step is to export a Xilinx shell archive or XSA file from Vivado, which includes the bitstream and other information related to the Vivado project and the PS configuration that you just set up in the block diagram. You can do this by going to File, Export, then Export Hardware. Click Next, then make sure you select Include Bitstream to make sure the bitstream is in the XSA file. If you miss this step, the first stage bootloader will not load your bitstream into the PL. Click Next. Then click Next again if you're okay with the XSA name and where the XSA file will be exported to. Then finally, click Finish. And that's it. We're done with Vivado for this video. But just so you all know, there's a lot more functionality that Vivado can offer. I'm only barely scratching the tip of the iceberg here. If you're interested and want to learn more about Vivado and how to make more complicated digital circuits, I'll provide some useful links below for reference.